Hey guys, welcome back to the Dr. Cliff AUD vlog. This is vlog number 138, and you kind of caught me in a state of laziness. Not because I was necessarily being lazy today. I mean, I didn't really want to flip the camera around to give you a different look for the vlog today. Um, I guess that's kind of lazy, but there's just a lot of stuff that kind of happened today. And I want to do a little recap of last week and the kind of the shenanigans that went on after last week's, last week's vlog. So let me go ahead and get right into it. So um, I guess chronologically, I should start talking about last week's vlog. So I know that I called out another Costco provider. Um, a lot of people took offense to that. And um, what I would say is this. If you took offense to that because you think I'm picking on Costco, you really need to go back and watch a lot more of my videos because I have like 650 videos at this point. And the vast majority of me is talking about all these other providers, not Costco, that are doing a really bad job of hearing care. But to be honest with you, my clinic gets a lot of you know uh, questionable situations that come in that were not done well at other clinics. And I'm talking private practice clinics. I'm talking about chains. I'm talking about hospital groups. I'm talking about ENT clinics. I'm talking about Costco and other big box retailers, right? So again, if you had issue with last week's vlog, go spend some time on my channel. I truly am a nice guy, not trying to be mean to anybody, all right? I just take offense to hearing care providers who do not take their profession seriously because it ultimately takes advantage of individuals with hearing loss. I don't find it funny, and quite frankly, it pisses me off, but I don't wanna go there in today's video. Um, I just think that we should be holding ourselves to a higher standard no matter where you work inside of this, inside of this profession. Um, and I often tell people all the time that like if I worked at Costco, it would be a fantastic place for you to go until I get fired because I took way too much time with you making sure that I actually followed best practices. Um, that includes a lot more than just real ear measurement. All right. So with that out of the way, uh, no ill will for me and anyone who had issues with my video last week. It just means that you have not been watching enough of my video content. So maybe I'll get a few more views out of this from you guys, which reminds me, if you like my videos or don't like my videos, go ahead and hit the thumbs up or thumbs down, whatever you want. Totally cool with me and then make sure that you hit that subscribe button if you want some more of this kind of juicy vlog content all right that out of the way let's talk about this morning and why I was lazy enough today not to flip this camera around so I woke up really early this morning because I knew I wanted to get a really long bike ride in I've got a couple of um, triathlons coming up here in another month month and a half. I've got to make sure that I'm in shape for them. I'm getting back into the half Ironman distance, which I've literally not done for about 10 years at this point because I figured, hey, while I'm on the younger side, I will do more of the, the shorter but faster triathlons because, you know, I'm still capable of going pretty fast um, comparatively, you know, at least age group wise. And usually here in Phoenix, um, I can, uh, you know, get within the top 10 overall in a lot of the races that I do. And so while I was still fast, I wanted to be able to do that. But after COVID happened, it kind of put a hiatus on a lot of the triathlon stuff. And I've kind of been out of it a little bit, but I figure, you know, I am I just hit 40. I'm probably at the age now where I should probably start looking at getting more into the long distance stuff where I don't have to like go quite as fast because I really don't want to get injured all the time. And that was one of the negatives of training and just going as fast as I possibly could through these, you know, two hour Olympic distance races. But um, anyway, it totally got sidetracked there. On my morning ride this morning, I made it about an hour into my ride and I got a flat front tire. And I'm like, ah, this is like the third flat I've had in the past like month. Um, so I'm anyway, you know, I'm pretty good at changing flats. I changed the flat pretty quickly, um, aired up the tire, started on my ride again. And then within 10 minutes, I got another flat front tire. And I don't know why. I think maybe the tubes that I've been using have not been the best tubes. So I'm gonna have, kind of have to spend a little bit more money to get better tubes inside of my tires. It just completely derailed my entire morning. I was trying to get a three hour bike ride in. I basically got like an hour and 10 minutes of a ride in, which means tomorrow I have to go out for a long bike ride and that was supposed to be a longer run day. So um, anyway, way, things were just a mess starting off the day. Ended up going to get a haircut. Hopefully you guys like it. Um, that was what I did right after I got back and showered up, cleaned up. I went and got a haircut. 
When I got done with that, I came back home and I was going to repair my front tire before I started working on scripting and researching for content creation, um, which is what I like to do on Saturdays. And I hear this big like bang outside. And so I look up, because we kind of have like a sliding glass door in our very bottom floor. And I was able to look out onto the street and there was like a SUV up like in our front yard kind of thing. Because I kind of live in like a condo type area anyway. And I'm like, well, that car should not be there. And it had smashed up against this like protective, you know, grate that we have over our water line uh, that kind of comes up out of the ground. And I go up and, you know, there's a lady in there and I tried to open up her door or she unlocked it. I tried to open it up, couldn't open it up. It was all like crashed in on that side. And then um, she, I told her she had to go to the other side, walked around. She ended up being okay. She had a little girl in the back seat. She was okay. The lady who was in the other vehicle that she had hit um, was a little, little bit older. And so I went up to her. Uh, she said that she was okay, but she had actually, her chest kind of hurt a little bit. I think the airbag got her pretty hard. Um, and so I ended up calling 911. You know, fire uh, firemen came out there, ambulance came out, police came out. They ended up taking the lady in the white SUV to the hospital. I think she'll probably be okay is what I'm guessing. But that, that kind of threw like a monkey wrench into the morning. And then on top of that, my wife's car had like a bulge in her tire. So we drive all the way over to Scottsdale thinking that's where we had to go to get the tire replaced. And they're like, no, 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 you should go to like discount tire back over by where you live uh, because, you know, whatever, the issue with the tire company. And so we ended up going over there. Of course, they don't have the tire. So we ended up doing that whole trip for basically nothing, chewed up the entire morning. And then... Um, before we knew it, I mean, we ended up having to go to the grocery store and running all these errands. And, you know, here I'm not really even getting to record my videos until like 7.30 at night. And just to keep you, uh, you know, aware of like how I typically do this, I'm typically recording by 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So it pushed me back a number of hours. I only really recorded one video tonight and, and then this vlog right now, um, and it's pretty late on a Saturday night right now. But um, nonetheless, uh, the, the cool thing about all of this is that I have a video editor now. Now, if you guys are unaware of uh, how my videos have been being edited over the course of the past five years, basically I've been doing it all. My wife Ashley does help out a little bit sometimes with doing an initial rough edit to chop out all of the mistakes and stuff that I make inside of a video. And then she gets it over to me and I'll go in and refine it all and then add overlays and voiceovers and stuff like that. And, um, you know, pretty slick process, but it took an immense amount of my time. You know, probably around 15 hours a week is what I would spend just editing. That doesn't include scripting, researching, and actually filming. So it's a significant amount of my week that is spent doing that. And I do it all in my free time because I see patients, you know, throughout the week. And I have a bunch of meetings that I typically do on Fridays. And, you know, I was just, I was trying to add on more uh, content creation. So as you guys know, I have a live video podcast. Trust me, we're still working out some of the kinks. We're going to give the um, Hearing Up Spotlight interviews uh, one more week. And if we can't get the audio right, we're just going to kill it because obviously... I'm an individual who wants people to actually hear something well, and uh, we're not able to do that with really crummy audio coming from the people that we're interviewing. And I'm not really sure if it's on our end, if it's on their end, but we're going to one last ditch effort to try to fix it. So um, the point being is that we're adding a lot of new content creation, right? With that, I'm working with Dr. Rachel Cook. It takes a couple hours a week to prep for each episode. And then, of course, it's a 45-minute hour, 45 hour, 45 episode that we run, uh, and it's all heavily produced, right? But then I also wanted to start doing reaction videos to other videos that are up on the internet that I'm like, yeah, I should really be reacting to that and kind of responding to it because there's a lot of not quite really that good things that are out there on the internet uh, in terms of hearing loss and hearing aids. And I just want to make sure that I kind of give my opinion as to what I think is good and what I think is not so good. But adding more content is just going to add more time to my editing. And so the thing is, is that here within the last couple of weeks, you may have noticed this, but the editing style has changed a little bit in my videos. And that's because I've hired an editor. So initially, I was going to hire an editor just to do my reaction videos. And then this editor did my first reaction video, and I'm like, crap, she's way better than I am at editing. 
um, I think I'm going to try to hire her to do all of my editing. And that's what I did. I basically, after she had done one, I'm like, hey, I know that we just kind of started working together, but um, I think you're really good. And I would like to have a conversation of maybe uh, kind of telling you what I'm trying to accomplish for individuals with hearing loss information wise. And let me know if you're down with any of it. So we had a Zoom call. This individual is from the United States, but she lives internationally now. And so we ended up having a call and, you know, we didn't make any decisions at the call. I just kind of was like, listen, here's where I came from. Here's my mission of what I want to accomplish. You know, here's the type of things I'm looking for. And then you let me know if you have the bandwidth to be able to accomplish all of it. And, you know, like a day later, she's like, yeah, I'm down with it. Here's how much it would cost for me to do this many videos for you each week. It's a sizable amount of money uh, to actually do all of this. But the way I see it is that if this frees up, you know, a good 10 hours of my time, because I still have to review what she's done. We're still in this phase right now where I'm having to review everything and give my critiques so she understands what I'm looking for because you know she can't read my mind I have to train her just like I would train anyone else for like what I want and what I'm looking for and she's really quick she picks up on that stuff really quick and you can tell that she has a lot of experience with doing editing which is super nice but that's the reason why you're seeing a little bit different edits from me here in the past two weeks is because she's really been kind of taking that on and honestly I do strongly feel like what she does is better than what I do but if you guys have any feedback on that I would appreciate it but this is going to open up my time hopefully to spend a little bit more time with Ashley my wife but at the same time I want to be able to create more content I want to spend my time being creative not going in and doing editing I am not a creative editor I mean I didn't get that much better at editing over the course of the past five years because that's just not my thing my thing is knowing about hearing loss and hearing aids and treatment options and just being creative at figuring out ways to convey that information in a way that you can actually understand I don't want to be spending my time doing these other things that I'm just inherently not good at and now that I have enough money coming in to allow me to take that money and push it back out to help me accomplish my goals um, I think that it's ultimately worth it but um, hopefully it ends up continuously going well um, you know depending on how much time this individual editor has I might have to see if I can find an, a second editor if I'm going to be adding more content uh, each week and you guys have probably been seeing a lot more content uh, of mine here in a lot of short form and Instagram and Twitter and TikTok and Facebook and all of that. And if you haven't, it probably means that you've unsubscribed from my channels because you find me annoying because I'm out there so much right now. But uh, I think it's a really good thing. Um, there's a lot more you know, subscribers coming on the channel, a lot more views that we're getting on the channel. So we're just trying to spread information and awareness about hearing loss and treatment options. So um, again, hopefully you guys like it. I, I am looking for your feedback over the course of the past couple of weeks, what you've been thinking about the edits to my content. Just so you know, the vlogs are still edited by me. So that's why they kind of still suck from an editing standpoint. So I apologize for that. Um, and also I'm repping my university that I got my doctorate from uh, University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign. So, okay guys, that is it because I'm rambling now. If you could do me a huge favor, hit that like button. If you do like these types of videos, then make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you're not already. And as always, I'll see you next week.